Hey guys, welcome back to MTV Co. Today it's just me, Nick, here uh, coming to you from my garage. And today I just want to do a quick video about cheap uh, electric mountain bikes and if they're worth it or not. I have my assistant Momo in the back. So I'll be going over why I chose a, a cheap e-mountain bike for my first e-bike, why I chose this bike specifically, uh, what it's what this bike is good at and what it's not good at. So yeah, stick around if you want to hear a little bit about entry-level e-bikes and why you might want one and why you might want to save up and wait and get something a little bit nicer. So this is an NCM Moscow Plus and it's a, it's like a direct to consumer brand. It is a hub-driven hardtail uh, electric mountain bike. It was just about $1,500, so when I say cheap, it's kind of relative to other e-bikes. You can't really spend much less on an e-mountain bike and have it be considered an actual bike you could you could go mountain biking with. There's some cheaper options, you know, on Amazon and things that you can find that are a little more like cruisers or something that you could take on light, you know, really light trails. But as far as something that you could actually mountain bike with, $1,500 is about as cheap as you can spend. So most of the cheaper e-mountain bikes are going to be hub driven, which means the motor is in the rear hub, which makes the rear end really heavy. Uh, most of the more higher end bikes are gonna have a mid drive. And I'll talk about, you know, a little bit about the differences about those in a bit. So when I first thought about getting an e-bike or electric mountain bike, I started looking into the options. There's a ton of really nice bikes out there for, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, but I knew a, my wife wouldn't really allow me to spend that much, especially just getting back into the hobby. And I didn't know if I would really stick with it or, or really enjoy it enough to, to warrant spending that much money. So I kind of set a budget around a thousand to two thousand dollars. And this bike was, for my research, the best you could get for about that price. Um, as far as components wise, it's nothing spectacular, but it does have hydraulic disc brakes. Um, it does have a front fork, it's, a, it's just a spring fork, so it's not an air fork. So yeah, after doing a, a decent amount of research, I, I really found that this NCM Moscow Plus was, was kind of the best bang for your buck at that price point. It was also in stock, which at the time, I mean even now, bikes just aren't in stock, you can't get them because of the time it is in the season and just with the pandemic going on, just the supply is a lot less. Uh, so I was able to get this, it was in stock and I was able to get it within the first week. I think it shipped to my house in like four days after purchasing it online. So that was another plus. Another thing I actually did want in my first e-bike was a throttle. And this one does have a little thumb throttle up here. And that's mostly because I come from a little bit of a dirt biking background. So with the throttle, that makes this e-bike a class 2 e-bike and there's really three classes of e-bikes when it comes to legality and where you can ride them. So a class 1 e-bike it has no throttle and it's just pedal assist up to 20 miles an hour. So after 20 miles an hour you can go faster than that mechanically but the motor will stop assisting you at that speed. A class 2 e-bike also assists you just up to 20 miles an hour, but it also has a throttle. So that's what differentiates class one and class two. And then a class three e-bike is one that assists you up to 28 miles per hour. So here in Colorado, the trails that do allow e-bikes, they allow class one and two. So this one was fine. Um, most do not allow class three. Those are pretty much strictly for uh, like Jeep trails and anywhere you can run motorized vehicle. As far as the assistance levels on this bike and most hub drive bikes, they don't have a, a torque sensor um, like the nicer bikes, which means that they don't really assist you based on how much pressure you're putting on the pedals, but instead they kind of just give you maximum assistance up to a certain speed depending on the assistance level you're in. So this one has one through six power levels basically. And really they're all going to be about 100% uh, power assistance but they only give you assistance up to a certain speed so level one will maybe go to two or three miles per hour level three will go to like six or seven uh, and level six will go up to 20 so it's it's a little harder to dial in your your level of exercise that you're getting on a bike like this because it's kind of always assisting you quite a bit but you still I mean definitely going up some steep hills you have to put in some effort so it's not like you're not putting in any physical effort at all, you are. 
it's just not quite as good as the higher end bikes as far as gauging and really dialing in the amount of exercise you're getting. So if you're interested in why we're riding e-bikes and a little more background on uh, e-bikes in general, uh, we did make a video on that, so I'll link that up here. So what are my thoughts on this Moscow Plus? I've had it for about three months and I've gotten, I think I've put over 200 miles on it, so I have a decent uh, amount of experience with it. And I'm not gonna go into all the specific specs on the bike, all the components and stuff. I'll leave a link in the description for the bike itself if you wanna find out about that stuff. I'm gonna give you my general overall thoughts on the bike. For me, uh, initially it was actually really fun. It, it, it did everything I really wanted it to do. For the trails I, I was riding at the time, which is kind of more, um, I'd say lower elevation trails that, that have some climbs and downhills, but nothing crazy, not you know three or 4,000 feet of vertical climbing, just like a couple hundred feet here and there. Mostly green trails, uh, maybe some blues. But yeah, for that, it was great. It would be actually a great commuter if you lived in a city where you didn't want to drive, you could ride this. Um, the, the range on it is really good, especially on flat, mostly flat level ground. I think I've gotten over like 40 miles on a battery charge once before and that was mostly flat stuff. So yeah, it definitely could be good for, I would say, just mild mountain biking and commuting and if you're just starting to get into mountain biking. And then once I started exploring more of the mountain biking trails that Colorado has to offer, um, I realized pretty quickly its limitations and that it wasn't really cut out for more advanced trails, higher difficulty trails. I think there's actually a sticker on the bike also that says like, do not take it off jumps or drops. So after getting a little bit higher into the mountains and taking it on some, you know, blues and black diamond trails, I really saw that it wasn't gonna be a great bike for, for that kind of riding. And at the time, uh, Mike, he had already purchased a, the Specialized Turbo Levo. So I had a really good idea of what a good e-mountain bike is supposed to be like. And I could just tell that this thing was so far behind the Levo that it was A, not very fun to ride on those trails. B, it was, I, I just don't think it would really hold up. I had to adjust the derailleur almost every ride. Um, I had gotten three pinch flats actually in the time I've owned it because the rear end is so heavy with that hub drive, that hub motor, that even with a lot of uh, really high tire pressure, I'd still just get pinch flats. Definitely not good for more advanced trails, definitely not good for black diamonds or anything like that. Uh, I did take it on some trails that were more advanced. I took it on some black diamonds and I did the trails. I was able to mostly do them. I definitely avoided some of the more tricky features on the trails but I was able to mostly ride those trails with uh, the guys on the, the better bikes. But it wasn't that fun. It was a little scary, a little sketchy feeling all the time. Definitely was kind of pushing my comfort zone as far as feeling safe on a bike. I mean, the brakes are okay, they're serviceable, but the geometry is not great for, for downhill especially. You just feel like you're right, way over the front tire. The tires are pretty narrow, so you don't have a ton of tractions in the corners. And yeah, overall, it was just pretty sketchy on a lot of the trails up in Colorado. So would I recommend the Moscow or any other cheap uh, e-mountain bikes to someone? I guess it kind of depends on what they're looking to do. If they are just getting into biking, especially e-bikes, and they're gonna be sticking to you know, the more like easier trails, then yeah, I think the, the bike is fine. It will get you from point A to point B great. It will definitely, I think, help someone that's in not the best shape, I mean, I'm, I'm not in great shape by any means, and it really just allowed me to get out and, and start getting some activity, some cardio activity. Uh, maybe if they have some friends that do some mountain biking, but they're in a lot better shape than them, and they wanna go with them, they could get something like this to kind of keep up. So if you're on a budget, um, something like this you know, could work, but I would say, really, if you, if you wanna get into actual mountain biking and do more advanced trails, I would just save up a little bit more. At least try and get to that $2,500 price point, which is like the hardtail high bikes. There's some other brands that have hardtails that are also around that price point as well. If you wanna get into a full suspension e-mountain bike, the cheapest you can get new is about $3,500. 
There may be some that are a little bit less, but especially for the name brand ones, I think 3,700, 3,800 is about as cheap as you can get. And they're, you know, kind of, I'm sure they're nice bikes. They're probably a little more uh, lower end components. So after riding the Moscow for a couple months, I definitely realized that I needed to upgrade to a higher end e-bike just to feel safer on the trails, to have more fun, to be able to explore more of the trails here in Colorado. Uh, having my buddies that I mostly ride with, they both have really nice uh, e-mountain bikes, so definitely had some bike envy on their bikes. So that definitely didn't help me feel good about riding this bike. In hindsight, yeah, I probably should have just waited, not spent the money on the Moscow and saved up a bit more, or just, uh, you know, waited a little longer to get a nicer bike. But it did help me see the potential of e-bikes and how much fun they can be. So I've actually already upgraded to a, a better e-mountain bike. So this is the used uh, e-mountain bike I picked up. It's a 2019 YT Decoy Pro Race. And it's obviously light years ahead of the, the Moscow. As far as capability, uh, ride comfort, fun factor, all that. So it's, it's an amazing bike. I've, I've taken on a few rides so far and I love it. The next video or two, I'll be going over the, this bike uh, in depth and my thoughts on it so far. So that's my thoughts on cheap e-mountain bikes and maybe if they're, if they're worth it or if they're not worth it, if you should save your money for a better bike like this, uh, what they could be good for, what they're not good for. But yeah, definitely let me know down below if you have any questions on e-bikes in general or on the Moscow, on the decoy. If this video is helpful, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, that really helps the channel, and we'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.